yet. Once we hear any baby news, we will absolutely pass it along to you. You can always check in at 844-967-2789, 844-96-PARTY. We are talking about Democratic Senator Bob Menendez of New Jersey indicted last week for allegedly taking bribes and gold bars and wads and wads of cash in order to do favors for the Egyptian government. And my question is, do we just not care about corruption anymore? Is it just so endemic that uh, this is just this is just the cause of, of doing the cost of doing business? Uh, Todd Alba is here. Greg Bach is running the board. And we have Tom on the phone. Good morning, Tom. What do you think? Are we just immune to corruption and bad behavior now? Good morning, Jane. Uh, first off, we the people ultimately are the government, and we must never forget that. Um, I have a question for Todd. Todd, what, what Supreme Court case do you think it is that brought about this unlimited um, spending on campaigns and brought money into uh, the political system more so than ever? Todd, now we can't hear you. Todd, uh, you there? There you go. Nope, Todd, uh, we still can't hear you. Uh, can you hear me now? There you go. All right, fantastic. <laughs> Uh, I appreciate the question, Tom. Uh, I, I would say it was Citizens United, right? Uh, the Supreme Court case that basically said money is uh, is speech. Okay, and and what what um, political party or what um, uh, was it? The conservative Supreme Court or was it a progressive or a liberal Supreme Court that actually decided that case? Well, it would have been a, a swing vote. I mean, you had Kennedy on there, so I mean, it would have been a slightly conservative Supreme Court. Okay, so what I'm trying to say here is that the um, the Democrats seem to have through HR one, um, they've tried to get money out of politics. If Hillary Clinton would have been actually put in, uh, or if she would have actually uh, won her election, um, we actually would have turned back uh, Citizens United. Um, money in politics is at the root of all of this corruption, and we the people need to actually not be fighting for every other issue under the sun, but we need to fight to get money out of politics. Because until we do, we don't restore government back to we the people. And that is the thread that actually holds all of this other stuff, whether it's uh, gun legislation and gun safety, or whether it's a woman's right to choose, or whether it's gay rights, whether it's, you know, whatever it is under the sun, um, whether it, it is uh, mortgage and, and Medicare for all, all of this stuff. We, the people, want certain policies that are not happening because of the fact of Citizens United and because of the conservative Supreme Court decision of Citizens United. So I just want people to really realize that money in politics is what's causing this problem, and it's the greed of money in politics. So I would just ask for any of my Republican friends out there, please, you know what, when you're in the booth, vote for Democrats, because even though we got someone like a Menendez today, this whole thing is about corruption and this whole thing is about money and politics. And I would just ask that you guys all just vote Democratic and let's get the money out of politics because the, the candidate, whether the candidate is a Democrat or Republican, it actually says they want to get money out of politics completely it is the person that probably will have my vote. But there's only one party that has actually been trying to get money out of politics, and that is the Democratic Party. Thank you so much for um, the call, Tom. We really appreciate it. As always, 844-967-2789. I don't disagree that, that Citizens United and this unlimited dark money is is a big part of the problem. I just don't know that there is anyone who is going to vote against being able to accept wads of cash on, on either yeah. side of the aisle. No, I, I agree. I, I mean, as a former Republican, I agree that Citizens United is a, was a terrible decision by a mostly, you know, a slightly conservative Supreme Court. And I wish we could do something about it until, you know, you pass legislation. And, and quite frankly, until you have a different uh, comp, uh, the Supreme Court has compromised different folks. 
it's going to be pretty hard to overturn that. I would simply point out that, yes, I think that certainly Republicans are responsible for putting Donald Trump in and, and having this very conservative court. But remember, Jane, uh, you know, I had a coffee shop at the time in Madison in 2016, and in, in Wisconsin, you had 23,000 uh, presumably progressives and Democrats that said, you know, I want to send Hillary a message. So they voted for Jill Stein. And Donald Trump won Wisconsin by about 23,000 votes. I, I mean, if, if you if you had had every progressive and Democrat who voted for Jill Stein or a third party candidate in 2016, Hillary Clinton would probably be on her second term and she would have appointed three uh, progressives to the Supreme Court. 844-967-2789. Robin and Brian, I know you're on the line, so if you can hang just for a little bit, we do have a break coming up in uh, in about a minute and a half. We'd love to hear what you think about it. You can call and or text anytime, 844-967-2789. Corruption in politics. Is it, do we even care anymore? Is it, is it a thing? Or is it just so commonplace now that that's how we do biz here in the United States, which is kind of disturbing? 844-967-2789. Todd Alba is here Greg Bach is on the board. I'm Jane Matnair filling in for Kristen Bry. We will be back and take your calls right after this. You are listening to As Goes Wisconsin. This is the Civic Media Radio Network. Welcome back. 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 All right. Well, there it's gone. Okay. Welcome back to Esco's Wisconsin. I am Jane Matinier in for Kristen Bry, who is out on maternity leave. We are taking your calls at 844-967-2789 on whether or not do we even care about corruption anymore with the latest news about Democratic Senator Bob Menendez from New Jersey uh, being indicted for alleged bribery uh, on behalf of the Egyptian government. So do we just not care anymore? Robin has been waiting on the line. Thank you for your patience, Robin, from Milwaukee. I'm curious, what do you think? Is this just how we do business now? Uh, no, I actually, I mean, I don't think so. Uh, I think there's kind of a different standard between, you know, uh, we seem to have gotten inoculated that, you know, everything is a scandal these days. Like, you know, this, this Lauren Bobert situation or whatever. I don't care. You know, I'm not Alanis Morissette. I don't care what <laughs> someone does in a theater. <laughs> um, and so, but I mean, it does say, it does kind of indicate that she's stupid, but that's confirming priors anyway. <laughs> but this Bob, uh, I mean, he, he, everybody's kind of known he's been corrupt for a little while. And what, you know, people, uh, Democrats and on the left, they should probably do is just, you know, kind of back up their talk. I mean, <laughs> We're the, the, the group that got rid of Al Franken for a picture. Um, but what I like to go back to is, you know, Blagojevich uh, was removed from office 90. And basically until a certain somebody pardoned him. Um, and, you know, as a public servant, like, you know, corruption is, is uh, just awful. And I think it, there's a huge line when you start talking about whether you know people are taking you know payola and all that sort of stuff and uh, yeah and so now the previous caller was talking about money and politics and you know that's certainly a um you know a really huge issue i don't know how you solve it the last thing was like mccain feingold campaign finance reform and all that sort of stuff um but you know I, i think one way is just to like a lot of it is systemic election things that our elections go on so long. It takes so much money to run and to sustain a huge campaign and whatnot. They're just not really easy fixes. Uh, I, and I think a lot of the easy fixes turn out to be actually worse policy ideas than the problem that they're trying to solve. But uh, I think we need to, you know, avoid like just be the set the high bar and, you know, and police our own because um, they surely aren't. Um, and yeah, that's all I got. Oh, all right. Appreciate that, Robin. And by the way, Jimmy on the live stream, uh, gives you a shout out for that awesome Alanis Morissette reference. So nicely done in, in working that in there. 844-967-2789. You can call, you can text, you can also leave a message on the live stream. If you are watching us on Facebook or YouTube or Twitter, Brian is on the phone from Iguanago. Hey, Brian, what do you think about 
corruption in politics, just the way we do things now? Unfortunately, it kind of seems like that's become, uh, you know, par for the course. Kind of like uh, when uh, white collar crimes happen, like hedge funds, uh, you know, commit fraud, where they take in billions of dollars and get fined millions of dollars. It's, for them, it's the cost of doing business. And uh, if this uh, Menendez guy doesn't uh, feel like he not, uh, needs to step down for, I mean, granted, I guess due process, he should uh, have his day in court and whatnot. But if he does get proven that he accepted bribery, absolutely, he should either be uh, stepped down or removed from office. And uh, to piggyback on some of the other callers, uh, um, they uh, mentioned that, you know, let's we need to start voting blue to uh, get, um, you know, as many of these people that we can out of office so that we can actually enact change and, and bring up policy to help, you know, help this country move forward for once. It feels like we haven't been, not for once, but I mean, it feels like it's been a while since we've uh, taken steps to actually move forward. It seems like we're just uh, dancing around all these uh, different topics without enacting any type of change. But the one thing I will say this, and I'm going to try and vote blue as much as I can, because the Republican Party has obviously shown that they could not care less about the American people, and especially, you know, I'm in Wisconsin, and I just, I see it every day how much they do not care, that um, these Democrats need to know that they, you know, can't play both sides like that, like, because uh, one thing, um, Citizens United is helping both sides, um, both Republicans and Democrats. It's, it's kind of uncanny. They come into office and leave office many times richer than they should have been. And to be like a United States senator or something like $200,000 salary, that's more than enough money for them to be able to do their job. But, uh, you know, we if not only do we need to stop things or get rid of Citizens United, but like we need to enact policies to where politicians cannot be trading with inside information on the stock market. It's just, it blows my mind that there's, that's still a thing that's allowed to happen. And you see it's not necessarily talked about as much or in the, in the mainstream news, but there's so much going on on both sides of the aisle that we absolutely need to get money out of politics. It's probably, like uh, the last caller said, not an easy task, but there has to be a way because nothing's going to improve until that happens because greed will always win out. Unfortunately, and, uh, yeah. That's all I got. Thank, thank you so much, Brian. Really appreciate it. I, I don't disagree with you. Yes. It sure does seem like greed will always win. Um, Todd, let's go back and describe what it was that Citizens United did. Because they did, they decided that corporations are people. Correct. And, and, that, and, and that money that, is and speech. That, and money is speech. And therefore, if corporations can't spend as much money as they want on the candidate of their choice, then therefore their speech is being denied. Is that yeah, no, that's the es that, that's the, that's the essence of it. And remember, there is a Wisconsin connection because this all stemmed from a piece of legislation called McCain-Feingold, where the late Senator John McCain, Republican of Arizona, worked with former U.S. Senator from Wisconsin, Democrat uh, Russ Feingold, and they, they wrote the bipartisan McCain-Feingold bill, which reformed and limited how much people could spend in elections, candidates. And that was challenged in this in this Citizens United case and the Supreme Court at the time, again, a slightly conservative court over said basically said, no, you can't limit through legislation, Congress, what people can spend because there needs to be a town square and everybody has to have a voice in the town square and you're limiting the speech. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, I'll be forthright. You know, that was years ago as a former Republican. I agreed with that decision at the time. But as I saw things progress what happened was the the person's voice without the most money got drowned out. So you can go to the town square and, and you can stand on the soapbox and talk, but what about the guy who comes along with with a truck and a sound system and yep. they can't hear you anymore? Yep. So so it was it was it ended up being a terrible decision. Russ Feingold and and John McCain were right, and it, it's it's completely changed the course of of uh, American politics. If I could just add really quickly, Jane and Greg, I don't think that. Being a, you know, wanting Menendez to step down and voting Democratic 
are mutually exclusive. You can do both. I mean, I, as a former Republican, yes, I'm voting for Joe Biden. And yes, I'm voting straight Democratic because I feel that's the party that still is in favor of demo- small d democracy. But it doesn't mean you shouldn't and can't call out bad actors. Absolutely. And I think people are tired of that. I really do. I think people are tired of the constant free passes that uh, that our politicians get and corporations get. The problem with getting money out of politics and undoing Citizens United, as uh, as Brian just said, is that politicians on both sides of the aisle are are getting rich off of this. So there is no motivation for them to ever change this. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a very true. And again, if, if you try to pass legislation, it's going to go into the Supreme Court. I would find it hard to believe that the current Supreme Court would would undo Citizens right. United based on on who's on there. Um, one of the things, if I could just real quick, Jane, this is from Politico back in 2008. Yes, I'm taking you back to 2008. This is fan- Talk about irony. Uh, John Boehner, former Speaker of the House, John Boehner, Republican. Oh, John Boehner, sure. Yes, John Boehner wrote a letter to his colleagues, a memo back in 2008 when William Jefferson, remember William, not that William Jefferson, but William Jefferson was a Democrat in Louisiana, very popular. He got caught with, he was indicted on bribery charges and found with $90,000 in cash in his freezer, stuffed in Pillsbury pie boxes. Didn't turn out well for him. And the Republican went in there and beat him on these charges. And, and the guy who beat him, his name was Joseph Akao, C-A-O. And so Boehner writes this memo called the time, the, the time is Cow. And he goes on and says that Republicans will take over Congress and find a way forward by focusing on ethics, ethics, ethics. Oh, please. How, how the times have changed, right? Oh, but my gosh. Everything is circular, right? Everything is circular. <laughs> Tony's ever been checking in on the stream, says, who doesn't have $90,000 in their freezer? I know right? I'd like to. I don't, <laughs> but I, I could try having $90,000 in my freezer. Right? Yeah. Um, also, texture uh, from the, uh, the 310, there's only one party that has tried to get money out of politics. Again, I think it's been kind of a half-hearted attempt to get money out of politics because this is, benef- again, this is benefiting people on both sides of the aisle. Look at somebody like Kristen Cinema. Look at some of these Ooh. first-term Congress people. Didn't she have a negative? Kristen Cinema, I want to say, had a negative balance when she went into Congress, and now she's her her net worth is is over a million dollars. I mean, that's well, a pretty even, good gig. Even look uh, recently, you passed uh, Ada Deer, who uh, was a great politician, a great Native American here in Wisconsin, a leader, and ran against my former boss Scott Klug. Uh, it was his first uh, first opponent in 1992, I believe. Um, and she made the pledge, her, her big line was, I don't take PAC money. She said, I'm going to be a different politician. I'm not going to take PAC money. Well, she lost big time. Now, I wouldn't say that's the only reason. I don't think that she was as good a candidate when you put her against Scott Klug, a former television guy. Uh, she her, her messaging just wasn't that great. She was a good candidate, but just there were other reasons. But the fact is, to your point, when politicians of both the right and the left decide, no, I'm going to do it the right way. Again, your voice gets drowned out if the other side doesn't agree to play by the same rules. Yeah, you make a great point, Todd. Uh, 844-967-2789, 844-96-PARTY. If you want to check in on this, and this again all stems from Democratic Senator Bob Menendez on Friday being indicted on some pretty juicy charges of bribery and corruption and not only did he have more than ninety thousand dollars in cash in his house not even in his freezer um but a number of gold (laughs) bars as well which again seems like a pretty good gig if you can get it um how do you defend that i mean how do you well i just happen to have him sit it's i mean even even the cash i guess you can say well i'm old-fashioned instead of burying it in a coffee can in the backyard i put it in the freezer but gold who the heck has gold bars I just lying around, you know, right. as, as, yeah. as as one does. Well, yeah. we're going to we're going to move on when uh, when we come back from this break. And I want to talk to Todd and we've been talking a lot about this and, and it's also across several different shows on civic media. Calling your lawmakers. Does it really make a difference? How many callers does it take to make a difference? 
What if you're the person who calls them every day? Do they look at you like, I, it's, it's Louie from, you know, Shibui is calling again. Let's just ignore him. So we'll talk about that on the other side. Does contacting your lawmaker really do anything? 844-967-2789. Jane Matnair in for Kristen Bry. Todd Alba is here. Greg Bach is on the board. And this is As Goes Wisconsin. You are listening on the Civic Media Radio Network. Yeehaw, and welcome back to As Goes Wisconsin. I am Jane Matnair. And for Kristen Bry, Todd Alba is here. You can hear him across the Civic Media Radio Network every weekday from 1 to 3 o'clock. And the wonderful Greg Bach is on the board. Kristen out on maternity leave. No news to tell anybody yet. We will pass it along as soon as we get some. Um, so, Todd, I wanted you, you worked for a state lawmaker for many mm-hmm. years. And there's been speculation that one of the reasons why Robin Voss actually seemed to blink a little bit about impeaching newly elected Justice Janet Protosiewicz was because there was so much pushback. And I'm curious, as someone who worked in an office, having constituents call, does that really make a difference? Does it really cut through or do they just, like I always like to characterize them, stick their fingers in their ears and go la, 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 la? Let me give you a really political answer. It depends. Oh, it depends. (laughs) Yes. If the callers like what they're doing, then they listen. No, I I think, first of all, I think that you're right that I think that Speaker Voss did pull back a little bit, at least temporarily, on this ridiculous impeachment uh, proceedings against Justice Protosiewicz, in part because not so much he got calls, but because key members of his caucus got calls. And I think that's the key as a former legislative staffer for both the state legislature and Congress. Your your boss or a staff, you don't really, to be blunt, you don't care about the calls that come from outside your district. So so if you're living in Green Bay and you're ticked off at Robin Voss and you call his office, you know, unless you're from Burlington or or his assembly district, I mean, it's a little bit different when you're in a leadership like that because you're getting a sense of your caucus. But for individual elected officials, you really care about the people who are in your district because that's those are the people who are either going to extend your career or end it. Right. And so and so I would say if you're if you're frustrated or if you're happy, call the person who represents you because that will have an effect. Usually if you're a competent staff, you'll at least keep a tally of of, you know, for or against so you could tell your boss, well, how are the calls looking? You know, and the, the first th- first thing you'll say is, well, is, is that from the district or not? Okay. And, and, and so that's that's the key is to call, you know, from your district. So my giving out Robin Wass's phone number on a daily basis isn't really going to matter unless those people call him <laughs> uh, who are who are from his district. It'll make you feel better. Uh, sure. I mean, and when you're I mean, I, I were, my boss was a set up majority leader and we used to get some calls, you know, as a majority leader. And I think that gives you a better sense of your caucus. But it has a lot more effect if you call directly to whomever represents you in either the Assembly or or the Senate. And what, mean about, Go ahead. And, and what about those who might call every day? Do, <laughs> do you just, after a month of, of that, do you just tend to blow them off as a policymaker? Oh, it's Ralph again, um, you know, complaining yeah, about I, I, I mean, I think if you're calling every single day for the same reason, at some point it's just like, okay, we get it. I, I think it has a lot more effect if – I've seen this happen in local school referendum races uh, where people create phone call trees. Let's call like 10 to get 10. So you get 10 people to call – 10 of your friends to call in, and it has a lot more effect if you do that than if it's the same person calling every single day. Oh, that's I'll interesting. Tell you, I'll tell you the one thing that has almost, well, I shouldn't say none, has very little effect are these are these postcards that different, you know, organizations make up and say, oh, just put your legislator's name on it and sign it and send it in. What happens is that's done by an intern. It gets put in a stack. A form letter is written and all those addresses go into a database. And there's a form letter that gets sent out. So, I, I, I mean, generally speaking. So, again, a lot of that is sometimes they'll be separated out between in district and out of district and sometimes the out of districts aren't even aren't even uh you know looked at or or responded to 
So it really comes down to the best thing you could do is either call, make it a competent, don't yell at people answering the don't phone. Swear. because don't Right, swear. because that, that, that's completely the opposite negative effect. Um, but be kind, be polite. You can be direct, be honest. And the first thing to do is say, look, this is, I'm Todd Allball and, you know, I'm represented by Senator so-and-so. Here's my street address. Because I look at their attention and, and say, here's my, here's where I live. And then this is how I feel. Don't go on for five or 10 minutes, make it a 90 second, two minute call at the most and say, I appreciate you taking this down. Please pass it on to your boss and have a good day. <laughs> and, and as you said too, Todd, if you do that, then you get 10 of your friends to do that individually. Right. And then they all get another 10 friends to do that individually. That might actually make an impression. Yeah. Also, people might find this interesting. Snail mail, a handwritten letter, because you get so few of them today. And writing a well-written, again, half a page, one page, handwritten letter and signing it, that will break through the clutter almost more than anything else. How interesting. Yeah. Because I, all I we really... get is, look at me, I say we. All, all they're getting are emails and, and phone calls. I mean, the number of actual handwritten, when I first started you know, working in the legislature in the 90s, of course, that's all you got. And now, post the internet, you hardly ever get one. So when you do, it really stands out. And again, not form written, not by a lobbyist, not by an organization, right. in your own words. That has a very powerful impact on a legislator and the staff. Yeah, just don't cut out all the letters from like a magazine or a newspaper and then tape them <laughs> right. together and I'll, send it. I'll, I'll tell that you during way. Act Ten. <laughs> during Act Ten, uh, we got some terrible stuff, uh, and my boss was the only senator and Republican that voted no on it. But we got some terrible. We actually had to evacuate one time <gasps> because we had uh, bomb threats in our office. Um, but our office was getting inundated by callers all over the country to the point where we could no longer do legislative business because I think there were four phone lines and you just pick it, you'd hang it up to try to, because of course you're still trying to do constituent casework, sure. like calling sure. the DOT for a road. You couldn't even get a line out. So we were having to do all of our business on our personal cell phones. Wow. And at well, that hey. point, at that point, it does no good because it's like sure. you're just messing up my day. <laughs> sure, exactly. Well, thank you for the insight. Thank you for joining us for this first hour, Todd Alba. I really, really appreciate it. We will have you back with us next Monday. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Great uh, and best to Kristen uh, and Mike as they kick off Parenthood. We will, we will keep everybody posted. Todd Alba, make sure you catch him today. From 1 to 3 on the Civic Media Radio Network. Thanks a lot, buddy. Really appreciate it. Coming Thank up next guys. hour, we are going to talk about unusual pets. We're going to talk Packers victory with Mike Clemens. And we're going to talk about uh, wine. Should all be oh, good. I'm missing wine? I, oh you're gosh. missing wine. So stay with us. This is As Goes Wisconsin. We're on the Civic Media Radio Network.